Looking to add an extra layer of security to your DDNS network? Want to make managing your network easier? Our latest feature may be the answer. DDNS keys offer improved security by having unique credentials that are disassociated from your NoIP account login. In this video, we'll explain what a DDNS key is, why you use them, and give an example on how they can be applied. We'll also explain how they are different compared to our grandfather groups feature. Then we'll go through the steps to implement and manage your DDNS key. Let's start with the basics. What is a DDNS key? DDNS keys are a new NoIP feature that we released late last year. A DDNS key is a set of credentials specific to a host name or multiple host names. A DDNS key can configure dynamic DNS without using your account login credentials. So, why would you need to use a DDNS key? Why are they important? First of all, a DDNS key offers improved security by disassociating unique credentials from your NoIP account login. This way, your NoIP account login credentials can be updated without reconfiguring all of your update clients. DDNS keys also offer better update client compatibility, especially with updates targeting multiple host names. There are many devices and manufacturers that work with DDNS keys. In fact, all of our existing integrations with devices and manufacturers will work with DDNS keys. These are just a handful of manufacturers that have existing integrations. Let's take a look at an example of how DDNS keys can make managing your DNS infrastructure easier. Say you are an IT administrator at a security camera company, and you use NoIP to access customers' cameras remotely. When you set up a new camera at a customer's location, you need to link your NoIP account, but you don't want to put your NoIP account credentials on their device out of security and privacy concerns. With DDNS keys, a unique set of credentials will be generated for each host name. They're still connected to your NoIP account, but it keeps things secure and easier to manage. If you are a paying customer, you're probably familiar with our similar feature called Groups. Groups were used to limit the access an update client has to your account. The Groups feature comes in handy when you are installing an update client at multiple locations and you are not the sole user of those computers or devices. So what is the difference between Groups and DDNS keys? DDNS keys have all the functionality of Groups but are easier to configure, more secure, and offer better update client compatibility. DDNS keys allow you to work more independently and are subject to less troubleshooting, making it a more robust and intuitive replacement for the groups feature. As you can see, DDNS keys are the clear winner when compared to groups. We recommend users use DDNS keys moving forward and only use the groups feature if they have already created groups that they need to manage. Therefore, any new host name will need to use DDNS keys instead of groups and will no longer be able to set group passwords. Now that you know more about what NoIP's DDNS keys are and how they can be a vital part of managing your host names, let's dive into implementing them. The DDNS keys implementation is a two-part process. This video will cover a general overview of both parts from start to finish. Part one is how to generate the DDNS keys. Part two is configuring dynamic DNS to use the DDNS keys you just generated. After we finish going over the implementation process, we'll include some helpful tips on managing your DDNS keys moving forward. Before you start part one of this process, make sure you are on site and have access to the update client. To utilize your DDNS key, you'll need to add it to the device. If you create a DDNS key and are not on site to update the credentials in the device, your updater could stop working. So let's get into what you need to do to generate DDNS keys. Follow the steps in the window to generate your DDNS key. Here, you can create a new host name while generating the DDNS key. On the next window, click Generate DDNS Key. This will create the DDNS key and bring you to the DDNS key setup modal. Process is similar for generating a DDNS key on an existing hostname. This information is required to configure DDNS keys. 
and it's your only chance to copy or save the DDNS key password. Please note that these passwords cannot be recovered. If you lose it, you must generate another one. We are now halfway through the DDNS key process. Now that the key is created, you can begin part two of the process and configure dynamic DNS using the key you just created. To configure dynamic DNS using the DDNS key you just created, you can use one of two different setups. You can either download our dynamic update client on a computer at the network, or you can configure dynamic DNS on a device that supports no IP, such as a router, DVR, or security camera. An important note is that both configurations require you to have access to a device that physically exists on the network you are wanting to access remotely. So first let's take a look at how to set up your DDNS key on a computer with RDUC. You can download and install our client on either Windows, Linux, or Mac. First, navigate to the Dynamic DNS tab on the left. Then, select Dynamic Update Client from the drop-down menu. Click on the download button, and from there you can install the program. Next up, how to configure Dynamic DNS on a device such as a router or a security camera. Log into the device. The manufacturer of your device should have instructions on how to do so. If you can't find it, check out our Configuring Dynamic DNS on a Router guide for some common suggestions. Once you are logged in, search for the Dynamic DNS or DDNS settings. This is typically found under the Advanced Options menu. Here's an example of configuring DDNS keys on an ASUS router. Most routers should have a similar setup. The DDNS settings may look different depending on what device is being configured, but the following information will be requested. Make sure to select No IP as your provider and add your DDNS key information in the designated fields. When finished, confirm these settings. A good way to test DDNS is working is by manually editing your hostname on your No IP account to something like 1.2.3.4. That way, a DDNS update is forced by your router. If you need help, you can always consult our website or your user manual for more detailed instructions. If your goal is to establish a remote connection to a device or a website, you will need to configure port forwarding. We have some guides on that. Please note, our customer service team will not be able to configure port forwarding on your router for liability reasons. Here are some examples of the popular router manufacturer's interfaces. Be aware your router may display a different interface. If you have any questions or are unsure what to do, we recommend finding a guide that provides more information. Now that your DDNS key has been set up, here are some notes for managing your DDNS keys. From this page, click on the Actions button, which will give you some options to edit your DDNS key. DDNS keys can be managed from the Groups slash DDNS Keys page. If you ever need to revisit your configuration, you can always head back to this page. And there you have it. That's the process for implementing and configuring NoIP's DDNS keys. So, to review, in this video, you learned what a DDNS key is, why we use them, and an example of how they can be applied. Then, we broke down the implementation process into two parts, as well as the steps to manage your DDNS keys moving forward. We are excited to provide our customers with this new feature. Don't forget to check out the video notes to check out the links to our many guides and articles related to what you just learned. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team. We look forward to hearing from you.